Thank you for joining me on Amazing People today. I'm really, really excited about this show. I have the privilege and honor of interviewing Lamar Green, who's the founder of Never Alone Ministries here in Woodstock, Georgia. And we're at the Never Alone Outreach Center today, and Lamar is gonna share his story about where he's come from and what he's doing now in ministry, and honestly, he's one of the most amazing people that I've ever met. So I'm really thrilled to be able to bring you this show. So let's hear from Lamar. So as you know, you are one of the most amazing people that I've met. I've told you that plenty of times, and I'm so thankful that you've allowed me to come and interview you. So I just want you to tell the world your story. So tell me about Never Alone and what the ministry is about and what you do at this outreach center, and then we'll talk a little bit more about who well, you are. Well, thank you for dropping by today, and you're special to our hearts too. Mm -hmm. Back in 2006, uh, we started this ministry reaching out to the single moms in our community that were having it rough. And one of the things that we did was to help pay past due power bills and keep food on the table for those families in Cherokee County. And uh, recently, the, God opened the door for us to have a permanent place here on Rope Mill Road in Woodstock. And what we do here is families can come in and receive food, personal hygiene products, and clothing as they need. Families can come once a month uh, for three months, and we sit down then and reevaluate where they are and see how we can further help. Mm -hmm. It's not about the green beans or the corn or the clothing that we give away. It's more of a, an encouragement and speaking encouraging scriptures to them and uh, praying with them. We pray without exception for everybody that comes through the door. And so we are just really delighted to be here. It's face-to-face -face ministry, uh, which uh, God has called me to do. If you had told me that I would be sitting here doing this 12 years ago, it would have been probably the furthest thing from my mind. I uh, was in the middle of a full-blown addiction of alcohol mm. and uh, was uh, not such a good parent and, uh, or father. And, uh, but God delivered me through that uh, at a men's conference that I attended. And there was an evangelist there that began to speak that evening. And uh, I had been in and out of AA for a long time. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with AA, but God really touched my heart uh, that evening. And uh, I made a deal with God, Lisa. I said, you know what? If you'll take this alcoholism from me, then I'll serve you the rest of my days. Mm -hmm. And he did, and I am. Wow. So uh, together... We can do great things with God. I definitely want to talk about what you're doing now here at the Outreach. I also want you to share, if you can, when you were in that time, in that dark time in your mm -hmm. life, which there's so many people out there that are in that situation, mm -hmm. and they're shame, ashamed to say that they're in need or say that they have an addiction. Can you help by sharing what it, what it is that you did? Did you tell a friend? Did mm -hmm. you go to a pastor? Did you What steps did you take? to come out of it? Um, the big thing for me, my biggest hurdle, and I think for a lot of people too, is that secret, the secret that we hold in our inner, mm -hmm. in our inner self. And I kept a front on. I was, doing, I was very successful in business at the time, and I, I drank because I was happy, because we, you know, we were doing good things. The b real breakthrough for me um, was letting it go totally to God. Mm -hmm. I was really scared inside. You know, mm -hmm. fear oh, and very, very fear, mm -hmm. and um, I, I didn't want anybody to know, right. including my family, mm -hmm. uh, because a man, you know, particularly you know, or all of us, we don't want to lose control, right. and when something has control of us, it's a very fearful position. Right. To me, fear was the biggest driver to my addiction of alcohol, mm -hmm. and I, um, I would always respond, well, I can stop anytime I want, mm -hmm. and the truth of it was, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I mentioned before I, I went to AA, and uh, AA is a great place. And but until I was ready, truly, re really ready, mm -hmm. and broke like a little baby girl, mm -hmm. crying uh, my eyes out at a men's retreat, and just saying, "God, you know what? I'm scared, and I've tried everything that I know to try." Mm -hmm. And uh, and I knew that I was at a breaking point, uh, maybe you know, in my marriage or what have you. Mm -hmm. And I was guilty of giving God some things, mm -hmm. but not Everything. all things. Right. All things. Right. And we keep that secret. And really, I look back on it now, and it was really kind of silly of me to do that, because God knows all things, doesn't He? 
He knows our struggles. Mm -hmm. And we all have various struggles, but we all have one solution. Right. And the solution is Him yeah. that, that brings peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. Sure. You know what's amazing to me is that not only did He set you free, mm -hmm. you know, which is a miracle in itself, but then He uses you as a missionary for his calling, for his purpose, and honestly, I'm sure when you were in your addiction, you could have never imagined that you would be a missionary called to the mission field in right. Africa and, right. and you know abroad. Right. You know, tell me a little bit about that calling when you realized mm -hmm. God was calling you to the mission field to feed the hungry and clothe the needy in Africa. That's an interesting story too. I, when I really got into ministry and God called me, I was really adamant about staying locally, you know, that people were hurting here. Katrina hit, mm -hmm. and we went down to Katrina Katrinaville, uh, is what I call it, and we made 16 trips with 55 different uh, homes that we helped to clean out during that time. And It was more about sharing hope with those that had thought they had lost everything but didn't have Christ in their, in okay. their life. And you're right, God moves you and elevates you in, in ministry. And when you're open to Him, he will take you to places you never would think that you would go. One day I went to, to Walmart to get some supplies for an upcoming Katrina trip. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a greeter there that was from Kenya. And uh, it really opened my eyes. He was a missionary here. Mm -hmm. And he said, how are you doing today, brother? I said, I'm great. Where are you from? I'm from Kenya. What are you doing in Woodstock? I'm a missionary. He was a missionary here from oh, Kenya. Wow. It spoke to my heart. Right. And then later I got invited to go to Africa as part of a mission team. Mm -hmm. And I went over, and God really opened my eyes to the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. Go and tell the whole world, right. not just Cherokee County folks, right. not right. just wherever you're from folks. But everyone is God's children. Sure. I ended up in an 80% Muslim-controlled country, and where less than 5% were Christians that were mm -hmm. persecuted. And God allowed us to raise up two churches there and an orphanage there. Mm -hmm. It's called the Village of Hope. Yeah. And uh, we have 42 children there that we love on monthly. They go to school, and 80% uh, of them had uh, malaria. We were losing one out of five before they were six years old, uh, dying an early death. So, yes, God can take you to places way away from Miller Lite beer, <laughs> way away from your dark point That's to good. where you feel captive and you're depressed and you feel worthless. No matter where I go, I feel at peace. You know, I've been into some crazy places, and, you know, Kind of shifty places, mm -hmm. but I have the peace inside, mm -hmm. and uh, it is it is the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And when you when you're born again and you're saved and He cleanses you, then you're, you're just ready to go run with Him, yeah. and it's a great great thing. One of the things that I love about uh, Never Alone and this ministry is the fact that you all don't judge people. Yeah. That is really, really important to me because mm -hmm. I know where I've been in my life and it's been the people that have loved me mm -hmm. that has brought me out of being guilty and shameful of where I am. Yeah. So if someone wants to, you know, is in need and, and they, they want to find a place mm -hmm. at this community center, is there some way they have to qualify or what do they have to do to be able to come here and know that they're not going to be judged? Any Cherokee County resident that finds themselves in need we make the process very streamlined, very easy. Two ways you can apply online for assistance at neveralone.org. A little short form that you fill out comes straight to us, and you'll get a phone call within 24 hours from the time you make that application. A lot of folks don't have internet. If you're, if you're hard pressed financially, uh, it's okay. You can call us at 770 363 5272 anytime within normal business hours from 9 to 5, and we can take a phone application okay. over the telephone. Basically what we're looking for is, is people with legitimate needs of food, clothing, and shoes, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. We will help uh, just about anybody as far as that's concerned. Okay. Uh, you can come once every 30 days for three months, and then we sit down and reevaluate the situation to see what's going on in your life. Some things don't change. Uh, examples, you know, you might be going through some medical issues. We have a husband and wife right now both have cancer. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's going to be a long-term process. Mm -hmm. We realize that. Uh, and, and the economy is a little rough right now. Mm -hmm. you know, the job market's not what it once was. Right. So we just want to make sure that we're good stewards of what God's given here. Mm -hmm. Not in a judgmental way, 
but to also encourage those that need help. Mm -hmm. That maybe we might have some further resources that can help you to build a resume mm -hmm. or get your name networked out there right. and open some doors of career opportunities for you too. Mm -hmm. We're not a job placement center, but we do have other, some resources that we can share with individuals that might need help in that area as well. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're going to definitely provide you with that information. Um, at the end of the show, you'll know how to reach out to Never Alone. And, and if you're somebody in need, you definitely have a place in Cherokee County to come to. So I would love if you would take me on a tour sure. of the community center, outreach center, and tell me how this all flows and how it all works. Absolutely. Be glad to. Awesome. Let's do it. All right. So you're going to take me on a tour and show me what people get to do when they come to the outreach center. Sure, sure. Once the uh, the family comes in, uh, they get to shop. Uh, and dependent upon family size, they'll come through the food pantry. And we start with grains. We have a grain section, and they can select two to three items depending upon how many members are in their family. Uh, we had talked about prepackaging uh, food in in bags to begin with. And we decided that wouldn't be a good idea because some folks are allergic to peanut butter, right. some aren't. Right. Some people eat Cheerios, some people like Frosted Flakes. Right. So it, it's just best to be a good steward of the food and also give families something that they will actually enjoy and eat is to let them uh, go through the selection process. So in order to keep inventory controls, we do uh, have quantity limits on certain items. Mm -hmm. And we have everything highly organized in our center. Okay. Uh, grains, vegetables. So this is the grain section here. You, can we get a shot of this section? Right here. And then this is our vegetables. Uh, and they can select and everything is color coded that goes along with the tags up on top oh, or the sides. Good. I, that's really cool. Sure. The tags on top. I didn't sure. notice that. And depending upon your size family, you see it, it tells you exactly how many of these items that you can choose from. Now one of our volunteers comes with the family through the shopping process to help them with the bag and, and because some of our folks are senior citizens, some are disabled, so they might, but we go through with everybody on mm -hmm. a personal basis. Mm -hmm. Combination foods are here like soups, ramen noodles, uh, stovetop dressings. And when we turn the corner, uh, Lisa, this is where we kind of uh, are different than most food pantries, if you will. We go over and beyond and we provide personal hygiene products that, that family families need for okay. daily for daily stuff. Stuff like paper towels, toilet paper, uh, paper plates. Uh, these are these are dyes for ladies for their hair. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, in case you want Seriously. <laughs> Do you see that? That is amazing. Yeah. You don't go to a, an outreach center and get dye for your hair. That is incredible. Yeah, we're really so you all have thought through, you know, you've thought through everything and you know, women want to still feel good about themselves even though they may be struggling. Exactly. That's yeah. really, really yeah, awesome. And also, if they're going for a job interview, it, it makes, it's great for them to look the best that they can physically sure. in order for that potential uh, candidate to be the candidate. It makes a big difference. That's laundry, great. laundry detergent for washing clothes at home is a big need. Uh, and then I, the basic things that you need to take care of, dental care, toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorants, uh, female uh, pads, uh, we have adult diapers uh, on the bottom for some of the seniors that are needed. Hmm. All kind of stuff. Even some vitamins is, is when they come in. Zinc. Zinc. Yeah, there you go. And uh, some stuff for uh, even cholesterol control medications That's are here. Incredible. And we also have a, a, a really neat partnership with the Pepperidge Farm Bread Company. And the bread man comes on Tuesdays and Fridays. Mm -hmm. And what he does is gives, a, they pull this off the shelf a couple of days before the sell-by dates. Mm -hmm. This bread is still perfectly good. And uh, they donate it to us to give to families in need. So they can take, uh, we have always a lot of bread that we're able to bless people with. A local church just did a, uh, a cake drive uh, for us. And, and their thought process here was for children's birthday cakes. And so you see we have a whole shelf uh, full of different cake mixes and below are, is the really good part that I like is the frostings oh, that you put yeah. on the cake. Gotta have that. And so we have candles so that moms uh, or dads can make or bake a birthday cake for their children at, at the special times. That is so awesome. That is awesome. So we'll swing over this way. Uh, diapers are a big, big need for, for moms. Very and expensive. They're very expensive. Very expensive. And uh, we do the baby wipes and the baby wash formulas here and food. 
Uh, this is typically not found in a food pantry. Uh, this again is something that we try to do with excellence and go over and beyond. Uh, mm -hmm. So this has been a big help uh, to those that, uh, that have numerous children. We have families that come in with a lot of children. Right. So we're just really blessed about some partnerships in the community mm -hmm. that donate these items. A lot of times we, uh, our supporters that, that send to us uh, financially monthly, we go and buy these items and, mm -hmm. and stock the shelves with. Our fundraisers provide financial resources to keep up the center as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are and uh, you, uh, it's just a, a wonderful blessing. So many people pulling together. You know, really together great. we can do great things with God. And, so the so what I love is that you don't come and get given a box or a bag that's basically one size fits all for everybody, which you know is one of my recent themes because I don't believe in one size fits all for anything. And you come and you get to shop for your own personal need. And what's great about that is honestly, when you are really struggling, I've struggled before. It, it's so humbling to come and ask, right. but then you know you get given whatever everybody else is getting, and then you kind of get home sometimes and think, right. I can't really use this or I can't use that. You get to shop for what you really need here, right. which which I think is really amazing. What a great concept and idea. Uh, okay, so let's keep moving. We're gonna look at some more stuff. So not only can you come here to get food, mm -hmm. but you can also come here to get some clothing. Yeah, clothing is uh, we discovered is a big need in the community. And uh, there is no limit within reason for the families on the pieces of clothing. Not only do we have clothing, but we have shoes and uh, socks, um, hats, gloves in the wintertime, seasonal changes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we just entered a season now, spring and summer, so we boxed everything up that was remaining for winter. We'll go back to that next year. Mm -hmm. So this is our, our clothing uh, area here. We have everything highly organized as far as sizes. Everything's on hangers. Okay. This is our ladies tops, small, medium, and large this way. Okay. And then it comes on down to our men's shirts, small, medium, and large. Okay. Rotates over this way into our children's ju uh, juniors and teens small and you see the we have shoes on the bottom racks that uh, it's amazing the amount of people that, that need shoes mm -hmm. just uh, basic shoes are great and then we have on the other side uh, is our newborn uh, items and we have uh, newborns all the way up to toddlers as far as clothing is concerned uh, tops pajamas everyday clothes they're all offered, uh, and of course there's no charge for any of the clothing items for families. We're averaging about 27 pieces of clothing and or shoes per family. Okay. And we just celebrated, Lisa, we just celebrated our 1,000th uh, individual that has come through the center. Wow. And we've only been here since October the 13th wow. at this location. So we're really happy with that. So and you've been able to feed and clothe a thousand people. A thousand people. We keep very great. accurate records being a nonprofit. And, That's great. And we just crossed over that milestone. So we're just delighted That's great. in what God is doing here. And oftentimes we have donated furniture that comes in. We've got a couple pieces that just came in today. Uh, some, some families need uh, various furnitures, particularly washers and dryers. We place a lot of those tables are always needed. Yeah. So if any of your viewers out there have a furniture that they'd like to donate, we'll be glad to come and pick it up and you will get a, receive a donation receipt that's fully tax deductible because we are 501c3. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, we can't forget to mention that this is a donation center sure. as well. Sure. You know, so if, if you have things that you're wanting to donate or, or get rid of, you know, this would be an awesome place to bring your, your items as well. Thank you for coming today. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you. This is great. We love right, this. That's right. awesome. Thank you again for joining us on Amazing People today. I'm really, really excited about Never Alone and Lamar's ministry. Um, it's in Cherokee County. We'll definitely be providing you with the information at the end of the show on the screen. You'll be able to have the phone number, the website. If you're a person in need, you can definitely get in touch with this ministry, as well as if you have things that you can donate, here's a donation center right here, local in Cherokee County. Uh, again, thank you for joining me on my journey to discovering amazing people one person at a time. I made it through the rain. He sang that. I see. I made it through the storm. I made my. <laughs> I got it out of the car. Why can't I fly?